Hello, this is Chuck Carnival, and I'm the Chuck in the Markets Up Chuck. One of the primary reasons I started this blog and website is to help investors be smarter and better informed, especially regarding investing in common stock. With today's post, it's titled Better Business Buyer. I think one of the key things about investing in stocks is to invest in really good businesses, but also invest in them at attractive valuations. Another kind of underlying theme of this video is to point out that, by definition, a better business is a stock who out outperforms the average business out there. And of course, the average business is usually measured by the stock market. So I'm going to start out by taking a look at a graph of the S&P 500. And what I have on this graph right now are the S&P 500's earnings only during this time frame going back from 1998 to current. And a couple of things, you can see there's a moderate amount of cyclicality, especially during recessions marked by this gray area. But the real focal point is that the average company during this time frame, going back to 1998, has grown earnings at a rate of 6% a year. That's normal or average, if you will. Now, the next component about it regarding investing in stocks is whether they pay a dividend or not. And this white line here plots the dividend record of the average company represented by the S&P 500 over this time frame. And you can see a pretty consistent record, a dividend cut coming out of the recession, and then strongly rising dividends again. And I'm going to add dividends on top of that. But here's perhaps the most important perspective that I try to get across with these videos. When I put monthly closing stock prices, you will see that there's a very strong correlation between earnings and price. And this orange line represents a fair value value P.E. ratio of 15 for the S&P 500. Now I've added a blue line, which is a historical normal P.E. over this time frame of 18.6. And this is kind of a valuation corridor, if you will. And you can see when the market was significantly above that being overvalued here, and then times when the price was below both the orange and blue line, like coming into the Great Recession, that was a tremendous opportunity to invest in stocks. But unfortunately, most people were scared to death. But look at the results going forward. But the bottom line here, and this is what I want to focus on, is if you look at the performance over that time frame, a $10,000 investment in the S&P 500 on December 31st, 1997, if you will, would have grown to $25,000 through July 25th's close. The aggregate dividends would have been $4,921 for a $10,000 investment growing into a total return of $30,435 or averaging approximately 5.8% per year. So this is average or normal. However, as it relates to the theme of this article, be a better business buyer, let's take a look at Amerisource Bergen Corporation, one of the largest pharmaceutical distributors in the country, actually in the world. It's a $20 billion market cap, A- minus credit rating. Um, as I'll talk about in a minute, pays a 1.5% dividend. But what I want you to really notice here is less cyclicality than we saw with the market. In fact, you see good earnings growth going through both recessions. As far as dividends are concerned, the company started paying a dividend in September 2002, and that dividend has grown very nicely. This area below the white line represents this portion of earnings that they pay out in dividends, so the dividend payout ratio is very low. But what I really want you to focus on is the earnings growth rate. This company, instead of growing earnings by 6% a year, as the average company has, it's grown earnings by 16%. Um, that's, you know, more than two and a half times faster. Now, when I put monthly closing stock prices on the Amerisource Bergen graph, you see once again this reality that the business generates the return over time. The stock price tracks the business results. Now, the orange line on this graph is represented of a P.E. ratio of 16.3, which is equal to the company's growth rate over this time. But what's really important about this graph is you see clear periods where the price was over the orange line or overvalued. You see clear periods where the price is undervalued or below the orange line. And in each of these cases, you see the price always returning back to that orange orange line. And we saw that coming through 2015 here in April of 2015, where Amerisource Bergen's price was dramatically above the orange line, and then it inevitably came back. And then since it became fairly valued again, you've seen some volatility, considering the fact that there's a lot of politics involved in healthcare right now. But now you have a very fairly valued Amerisource Bergen. So let's look at performance of this better business, if you will, over this same time frame we were originally looked at the S&P 500. A $10,000 investment in Amerisource Bergen 
would have grown to 129,000 versus the 25 or 6,000 we saw with the S&P. Instead of getting $5,000 worth of dividends, you'd have received $9,000 worth of dividends. Your capital appreciation averaged 13.8% per annum, and your total return was 14.2% compared to 5.9 for the S&P. It's the better business. It's the business results here the growth of the company's earnings that created the valuation and not the other way around. So my suggestion is be a better business buyer, but more importantly, invest in those businesses when they're fairly valued. Because I want you to notice something here. The capital appreciation that I showed you down here of 13.8%, I want you to notice it's less than the growth rate of 16.3%. That's because the price of the stock was above the orange line here. So let me drop a couple of years off of the graph and get find a point here where the price is pretty close to being in fair value on the graph. And here's a, here's a perfect example. So if I go from 2004, now I get a different growth rate here because it's a different time frame, but I get that same picture above and below the orange line, the price ultimately tracking the orange line. And you see a 12.9% growth rate here. Here we get capital appreciation of 15.1%. What I want you to see that happened here, it was trading at a 15 PE ratio here. The orange line in this iteration is a 15 PE, and it's trading at a 16 PE. So we had 13% growth during this period of time, and we had minor PE expansion, but we also had the price following the earnings. Now you get a total rate of return of 15.7%, which is a combination of the $5,000 in dividends plus the $70,000 in value. And here that compares to the market only turning $10,000 into $24,000 and only paying $3,900 in dividends, bringing the total to $28,776 or a 7.9% rate of return. So when you buy a better business and you buy that better business at an attractive valuation, you're going to end up making more money in the long run. Now, if I shorten this time frame to just after the Great Recession, you once again see this Amerisource Bergen is growing at 15% a year, 15.1. You once again see this correlation of price to earnings. You see the overvaluation, and I want you to also see how dangerous overvaluation can be. The company was still doing well here, but the stock price dropped over 38%. But in contrast, when the company was fairly valued, going to now where you have a little maybe minor overvaluation, the stock averaged a 21.8% rate of return. So valuation and business results are a powerful combination to generating great returns. Now looking at Amerisource Bergen going forward, the price is just moderately above the P.E. ratio of 15 here, but given estimates going forward of 8.5% growth, this would represent modest overvaluation. However, if you look out a little further, there are three analysts that expect almost 9.5% growth, and this would make it an attractive investment. So Amerisource Bergen would be one of the better businesses I talked about. As it relates to its price today, I'd like to see it just a little bit softer than it currently is. Now, the good news about that is the price is off about 1% looking at today's quote. This is a current real-time quote at 1143 when I produced this video. So here's an example. If this stock would drop a little bit, if I could get it at around $88 a share instead of $95 a share, then I would consider this a very attractive buy. But it is a better business. The key is exercise the discipline to buy it when its valuation is sound and attractive, or better yet, when it's undervalued like it was here. The venerable Warren Buffett said, be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. Here, investors were being greedy and you should have been fearful. Here, investors were being fearful when you should have been greedy. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I really appreciate you watching. I look forward to producing the next one.